So here's an absolutely beautiful, ultra modern building. And you can imagine on the outside, from the outside, um, this is going to be an incredible space to photograph. Except, number one, we're dealing with an empty space again. Number two, we're dealing with a contemporary space, which means a lot of sharp lines. Um, sharp lines in a contemporary building often come across as cold and detached, not the emotional experience we want. Number three, it's situated in such a way that controlling the volume of light in the space, which would eliminate any potential reflections in a window, is extremely difficult to do. We thought about, or I thought about, bringing additional lights. Um, I ruled that out, and thinking about the shoot now that it's done, we should have. For those who aren't familiar with the concept of volume of light, it's absolutely key in photography that the difference between white and black be, as we say in photography, one f-stop. Every f-stop is a two-fold difference. In most of the rooms that we were working with in that empty building, we were looking at an f-stop difference of somewhere around four or sixteen-fold. That's not uncommon for us. We're typically in situations where we encounter that. The problem was that we didn't have a lot of time. We were trying to photograph the building as people were moving in, and there was, except for the conference room, absolutely no furniture anywhere. So we decided that we, we took what we called a safety shot, which theoretically means that we had an image that was perfectly exposed for the midtones, not necessarily for the highlights or the shadows, so that if in post-production we needed to take a picture, a section of that picture, particularly a window, out to remove um, a reflection, we would be able to do it. This isn't the first time that we've had to deal with long conference rooms where the volume of light is not only inconsistent, but it varies almost every foot. It's a question of balancing the amount of time it would take, for example, to set up four strobes with the amount of time we actually have in the building. In the case of the conference room in particular, we were able ultimately to use two smaller, well underpowered strobes to take out some of the dark areas along the wall to the kitchen but in the end, the next time we do that, we have some battery powered 1000 watt per second strobes. Uh, we will be sure to bring them. The other problem which we faced, which we've discussed on several occasions, is capturing a sense of emotional presence in an empty building is extremely difficult. We try to anticipate where the furniture will be so that people can almost intuitively feel what the space will look like. Again, when you're dealing with a very contemporary building, uh, this one even had opaque white walls that further shifted the light in some cases. Um, our goal is to get people to the point where they have a sense of what it will like, be like to emotionally be in that space. That added some potential. It also eliminated some angles that we otherwise would have taken. Um, the other kind of unwritten problem we faced was the industrial ceiling. In a lot of cases, it was white. And in several of the shots, even though our lights were not aimed up, a disproportionate amount of light was striking the ceiling and coming down and creating some unwanted reflections in the windows. Anytime we're dealing with a space that's empty with a lot of windows, it's extremely challenging from a technical perspective. Um, as much as I prefer the use of strobes, they are not without their problems. I guess the last point I would make here is ironically back in the day I said to JD in the fall of 2002 that photography could not possibly be terribly difficult. 
I mean, you put the camera in automatic mode, you pointed it at something, pushed the shutter, and it did all the thinking for you. I was reminded again when we were at Art for Art's Sake that there's nothing about that that is in fact true. It is inordinately technically complicated, especially when you have to anticipate how an image is going to look after it's been post-processed. And we're talking about sometimes days or weeks later before you can determine whether what you did matched the intended emotional experience.